What is up, Farner brothers and sisters? I love to keep the Farner conversation going, and with football kicking off here in America, oh, it's good. There's an obsession with ratings, so I've decided to have some fun rating for honor heroes in a different way than you may have seen others do it. I'm not putting heroes into tiers. That's the first thing. I'm going to go one through 35 with not a single bias in my head towards my favorite hero, the versatile and elegant Nobushi. Now listen, I know I'm not the best player on these For Honor streets, and I don't need anyone reminding me about something I already know, but I am an experienced player, having played this game for a larger part of my life than expected. I'm comfortable putting my name to these ratings in what is meant to be a fun exercise for all of us. To be honest, all of these heroes are solid in the right hands. I think most of you know that. A few things that must be noted, these ratings are not taking into account hero feats and perks. This is a rating of the hero without the add-on, so to speak. Think of how you use a hero in a 1v1 situation. Also consider how you would use them in a team mode like brawl matches that are not just multiple 1v1s where there are also no feats or perks. Or to a lesser extent, the beginning of a 4v4 dom or breach match where there are no feats, but you do have the micro buff perks. You get the gist of where I'm going with this. Lastly, remember this is not based on how you individually play the hero. It is about how the hero was delivered. However, if you want to think of it like that, and your experience with both heroes that you're thinking about, think of you playing as both heroes in a you versus you situation. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. And as with any ratings, a lot of these margins are paper freaking razor thin and they are debatable. So feel free to let me know what you think. I always enjoy seeing the different opinions out there. So here are my post Sohei 2024 Ardor Hero ratings. This is not going to end well. Number 35. Peacekeeper, AKA PK, she comes in here, the bottom line, somebody has to be last, and in my ratings is PK. It's beautiful, she has bleed, and she can stack it indefinitely, but so can other heroes like Shaman, Nobu, and Warmonger. One of the main reasons she's here is due to her being a situational threat in team fights. If you're not bleeding, you can just externally block her, and she can't do anything about it. I still got love for you, PK. Number 34, Lawbringer. A big hero with a big health pool at 140. The long arm was one of the most fun elements about the hero. And ever since they started tinkering with him, he's lost a little bit of himself. He's clunky, doesn't feel very unique to play, and mainly just feels downright basic. Law and Rigor Man, y'all might hate me for this. I might get a dislike right now because I said that. I'm just letting y'all know. This is how I feel about the hero. You'll still get whooped by Lawbringers. I know I do. So y'all Lawbringer mains be happy to know. Y'all probably coming for me as soon as I see you out there. But that doesn't change the fact this hero needs work, and at least we can both agree on that. Number 33, Warden. Slightly larger health pool than the average hero at 130. I still wish he had a side crushing counter lights versus only top, but he's always steady in the right hands. He doesn't stand out amongst the hero crowd, and he doesn't need to. Number 32 is Berserker. Slightly larger health pool than most assassins. Good chase capabilities and his feint to hyper armor is a hyper offensive player's dream. However, he doesn't have an opener and the range on his axes and team fights can be a, a detriment, leaving him to have to lunge in with like a well-timed dodge forward light or heavy attack. But he's good and fun to play. However, the positives of the other heroes outweigh Zerk's positives, in my opinion. This is all my opinion, of course. I need to stop saying that. Number 31, Griffin. This copycat of other heroes makes him low in the uniqueness department but he still carries the tools to get the job done with hyper armor parry punishes, bashes, and undodgeable finishers. Number 30, Zan Hu, a fluid hero that banks on his recoveries. One of his best tools is his zone, very helpful in clearing minions and situational use in team fights. With that being the case, Zan Hu is exactly where he needs to be. Would be nice if they could make his top superior block follow-up heavy confirm like the sides and just speed it up. Another side note, I know feats and perks don't factor into this, but I do think the Ferrano team needs to create a hero with fire abilities that Zan Hu's unique feats could kind of work off of. That would be nice. But number 30 is where Zan Hu ranks. Number 29, Raider. Raider is fun to play and has quite a few things going for him. Unblockable from neutral is insane and definitely comes in handy, but there wasn't a lot of imagination in his kit, which is why Hyper Armor was a necessary fit for him to avoid interrupts. He's not overly threatening despite his look, and he fits nicely in this area. Number 28, Sohei. The most recent addition to the hero lineup, and while his uniqueness is off the charts, his moveset leaves a little bit to be desired. 
Benkei's vengeance is a fun move to pull off and it's deflating if you don't and the hero simply needs to hit harder and should have hyper armor on his opener freaking heavy. For now, he sits here. Number 27, Kensei. I feel like Kensei is a slept on hero. He's like the consummate professional samurai if there is such a thing. He can hold his own and is probably the most skilled out of all the heroes. The way he can manipulate the use of his weapon while others can't. Maybe Aramusha is a close second. The problem is relying on a finisher to get to hyper armor. And I do think the devs are going doing everything that they can do to make his top unblockable the coup de gras for him. But for now, this is where he belongs. Number 26, Conqueror. I've liked what they've done with Conk. The only thing I want him to have is something he can chase other heroes with, and he goes up on this list based on the moveset versatility. He has the same solid tools. His full guard is awesome since it allows you to zone or go unblockable on the target. Superior dodge block, large health pool as you would expect for a heavy. Not everything is rosy though, and this is a good spot for him. Number 25, Nusha. Nusha's unique traps is what pushed her up the list a bit more, although she has a boring kit. It's just boring. Light, heavy, trap. Some heroes can go full guard, pounce, and other things, but with Nusha, it feels they thought traps were enough, and they're not. I do foresee them creating another Nusha move. I think it's gonna happen. We can dream later. She stays here for now. Number 24, Tiandi. I think I enjoy watching a good Tiandi player as much as any other player out there. I just love the fluidity in which he can play, enhanced dodge attacks, undodgeable lights with bashes, feignable kick. I've seen some Tiandis have a lot of fun out there with him. He's still a better 1v1 hero than a team hero, but he's unique. And that elevated him to this point, but no further. Number 23, Zhang Jun. I call him the dancing bear. He's another hero that has some solid pieces to his kit. I love the Sifu's poise but it's so limited what you can do out of it that everyone just looks for the unblockable. His kit is partially baked, but he still has plenty to get the job done and can look great doing it at times. And his personality definitely lets you know about it too. Number 22, Shigoki. He loves to hug, but not everyone wants one. He's definitely a problem, but not the most imaginative kit. And he's not overly unique in the way that he moves. So this spot is solid. Now I want y'all to, to keep in mind here, I'm going through these and I'm just giving you little things, right? Just some of it informative, some of it for entertainment purposes. But I've done so many videos where I've went in depth with these heroes. I don't want to just repeat all of that again here because many of you already know about all of these move sets and whatnot on these heroes. So just remember the criteria and then think about the rankings. All right, so let's continue. Number 21, Nobushi. So much style and grace with this hero. You know that's my girl, that's my main right there. But what holds her back at times is her lack of ability to get her offense started. With no opener, Kans will just wait on her and that's a no-win situation for Nobu, especially if they're good players. Most times, however, she can be a nuisance with interrupts and those interrupts can cause bleeding. No opener, no higher on this list. Number 20, Jormungandr. Yorm can get into the offense quickly with the hyper armor or neutral heavies, enhanced light attacks or bash, the uniqueness of his hammer slam, and recent adjustments to the zone places Yorm comfortably, I believe, at number 20. Number 19, Shaman. She's a freaking terror. She's just a freaking terror out there. Her sounds match the way she plays. She's a beautiful savage. It's fun watching a good Shaman make their opponent bleed while gaining health themselves. She's a joy to watch and a terror to fight against. Number 18, Aramusha. Always looked at Artemusha as that cool guy on the corner that just minds his business until someone steps to him and then he just goes off. I, I love his aura. It's just unfortunate he would look cool as heck switching blade directions, but then they all get blocked and it just takes the sting out, you know? So even still, I'm a fan of his moveset and it's ring the bell that pens allowing for teammates to take advantage, but Aramusha is gonna sit here at number 18 for me. Number 17, Centurion. Scent is an attitude and I love it. Number 16, Warmonger. She's a mood, voice lines are excellent, everything about her is in sync. She can stack bleed, has an uninterruptible and undodgeable four dodge heavy, and all around, feel like she's more interesting warden variant. That side dodge unblockable heavy along with her voice keeps your attention, especially if she's external. Number 15, Valkyrie. Valk's got all the tools, they just need sharpening. They just need sharpening. Number 14, Hitokiri. Variable heavies are a nightmare to deal with. They know it and they use it to their advantage. The danger of this hero definitely fits the narrative from what the hero first came out. If you guys all remember the trailer, it was very creepy, very spooky, and those variable heavies represent that fear very well. Number 13, Varangian Guard. She was ready made from the beginning to be successful and she was, 
VG is very versatile and starkly reminds people of BP, of course. While she is a great support hero and teammate for the obvious reasons, that does knock her down a peg on the uniqueness meter. Credit will go to the original. She's still great and has all the tools, but not sure how much farther she can really go up on my list. Number 12, Pirate. You can't argue with that, right? Number 11, Gladiator. Hard to get kills without toes. Glads take them, allowing teammates to take other parts. I like Glad in this spot. Others might find it surprising. I think he fits good here. Number 10, Warlord. Feels like a forgotten child out there. Don't see as many Warlords as I used to, but still one of the most effective heroes you could use, and definitely one of the more versatile heavies. Number 9, Shaolin. Shaolin seem to have some of the most fun on the battlefield as they set things up for their teammates and quickly maneuver around the battlefield. Number 8, Kyoshin. There's a surgical approach to a Kyoshin's work, and I appreciate that. Number seven, Asalato. Feverish attackers, unique bash and dodge attack. Not that great of a dodge attack, but it's unique. You can always tell when they're on the hunt. Number six, Orochi. Yep, that same Orochi. Number five, Highlander. If you're thinking versatile moveset and uniqueness in a hero, there's no surprise he lands this high. He's an effective teammate as well. Number four, Majai. This hero, I'm telling you, he's underrated and undervalued. There's not many heroes I would want by my side over Majai. I know you guys probably think I'm crazy right now. Although getting interrupted by the sweeping uninterruptible can be aggravating, I like a Majai by my side, I'm telling you. I like him on my team. Number three, Shinobi. His team fighting capability is what really catapulted him to the top, more so than uniqueness or anything else. Number two, Black Prior, the most versatile heavy of them all. And number one, it really shouldn't be to anyone's surprise, in my opinion, Afira. Afira is number one in my hero ratings based on that criteria you saw in the beginning. I don't even play her like that, but she's got and can do everything. You can be dangerous on reaction with superior block dash, aggressive with neutral bash and chain bash. She can be an effective nuisance in her team fights with the feignable bash, as well as an accessible unblockable. And she has some unique tools about her, such as the heavies with different properties and can chase really well. The fashion tiebreaker wasn't even needed. Afira is number one. Number one, hands down. I may get a ton of dislikes on this one and that's okay. It's all for fun. It's for for honor and it's for this community. It was quite a bit to go through and consider. We got through it and I enjoyed every second of it, y'all. I hope y'all did too, whether you disagree with me or not. But now it's time. Let me know your thoughts on the hero ratings. You think I have a hero extremely underrated or overrated? Let me know about it. Remember, like I said in the beginning, this is not based on how you play the hero. I also want to direct all you For Honor freaks that enjoy these type of videos to the For Honor information hub. That's something that I did reference when doing this video. I'll put a link to it in the description and there's a ton of information you can pull up on every hero. So shout out to everyone that keeps that page updated and on point. Now, if I'm alive and kicking, I plan on doing this again next year. Some of you will probably say, oh no, please don't do another one. <laughs> but I'm doing another one. I'm doing another one, y'all. And the year after that, as long as For Honor continues to get supported, unless the entire player base leaves, because then we can't have any fun anymore. But thank you for watching. There are so many good videos out there that you can click on, and you decided to click on this one today. I appreciate you. I thank you for that, and I always will. Until next time, peace. You got no way to hold them. Walk away and know when to run.